Hey guys, welcome back. So I got a great video for you today. Due to popular request, um, I'm going to be doing a video talking about Yoast and some of the things that I do for search engine optimization inside the WordPress platform. I've had a lot of people come to me and just ask me, well, I don't know how to create a focus keyword. I don't know how to make a, uh, a key phrase strategy and I don't know how to do this or that. And so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this. Um, this is super important stuff as far as getting your pages to rank in search engines. Um, so first and foremost, I would, I just want to make a shout out to Yoast.com. Check this website out. They have a great knowledge base in here where you can learn all sorts of cool things about SEO. So if you're just totally new at this, start on this page, read around, get familiar with stuff, um, because you're going to need to know it going forward. So with that being said, um, I've basically taken an old website that I was working with and I've put it on ZAMP locally and, um, that's what we're looking at right now is the dashboard for WordPress right now. But um, once you go through the configuration wizard, once you install Yoast, um, is you want to basically be doing all your work out of under either the pages or the post section. Um, so let, let's just start with pages. I'm going to go to all pages right now. We're going to go to, I've done obviously a little bit of work on some of these. So let's just forget about those pages and let's start fresh with the appointments page here. So. The very first thing that I want to do when I get into this page is set a focus key phrase. This is the most important part because all the content on the page is going to be really revolving around the focus key phrase. So first thing is first, what is a focus keyword? What's a focus key phrase? So the focus keyword or phrase, and this is according to Yoast too, is a search term that you want a page or post to rank for the most. So when people are searching for this phrase, this page is going to come up in the search engine. So it's important to understand too, that there's a huge element of psychology and trying to deduce exactly how end users are being connected to the content they want to see. And, and, and that middleman or in development terms, that API LOL is the key phrase. So the middleman here in this case is this focus key phrase that we're setting. So it's really important that we set a good key phrase. So for this particular company that I was working on here, um, their website development and SEO also. So um, I want to do something like, um, this is just super generic. And actually, I'm going to flip-flop it around here. Um, spelling. So web development appointment. This is not the best key phrase in the world. Um, I could think of a whole lot better. But for the purpose of this right now, we're just going to go with it so I can kind of demonstrate some of the other elements that go into Yoast. So I'm just going to go ahead and update that. And if you notice too, Yoast is like, hmm, okay, all right, I'll give you, I'll give you a little medium face there. So what we want to do is go down to SEO analysis and drop down this tab. And it's going to tell us everything that it wants us to do to make this page um, rank in the best way possible. Now, it's important too to understand, guys, that this is just a guide. If you follow everything down to a T like a robot here, Things aren't going to be right. Yeah, you might rank a little bit, but the relevancy of your page and actually getting relevant content and, and people that are the correct viewers that you want to come into your page, like relevant viewers, um, you're not going to get that. You're not going to see results. So I feel like you're an e-commerce site and the ultimate goal is to make money and, and to drive sales, right? To create revenue. And if you just follow all of these things like a robot, um, you know, you're and you don't get any turnover as a result, you know, there's a problem there. So I just want to mention that. So um, I'm going to look at some of the very first things I can do here on this page. So like focus key phrase in the slug. So part of your key phrase does not appear in the slug, change that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this key phrase, web development appointment. Now that's kind of a long slug. And this is again, another reason why I think that, that key phrase could be better, but um, this is just an example, right? So let's just change this to web development and appointment. All right. And let's update that. Cool. So let's go down and awesome key phrase in the slug. We got it. Check. So let's see key phrase and introduction, key phrase density, meta description. So yeah, let's do the meta. Um, let's go in here. So this little box right here, and you guys have all seen this, this is what the, what the actual snippet is that's coming through on the search engine. This needs to get changed also. So you can just click on this and then you can adjust the title, which is this. And the meta description is this. Now, don't get this confused, guys. The meta description is not really for the, the end user. It is, 
but it also isn't. It's more for the crawlers to take away information about what's on this page. So you want it to be readable in a sense of you want a human to be able to understand what's being written. But remember, you're not writing it for end users. You're writing it for crawlers. So for this particular meta description, I want to make sure that I'm including my focus key phrase in the first thing here, in the same way with the SEO title. But I'll give you an example here. It's going to look something like web development appointments book your appointment today um, we'll do website development design let's just say for the purpose of this they also do migrations and um, and then I also want to usually throw in a geographic identifier here and the reason being is um, you know, a lot of people will search for like web developer and then whatever city they're in. So I'm in Las Vegas, so I'm just going to put Las Vegas, Nevada. Geographic identifiers are really actually super important for finding, especially for map rankings too. So you want to try to include geographic identifiers as much as you can without key phrase stuffing. Google does not like key phrase stuffing. So don't do it. Very bad. Um, anyway, so SEO title. So let me just get rid of all this crap for right now. Um, again, you really want to have that focus key phrase in the SEO title too. So web development appointment, um, I'm going to insert a snippet, do a little separator here, and you can also change these separators in Yoast in the settings. Um, you can make different little, um, separators that have different styles and designs. So just a heads up there, but, um, I'm also going to put in like a site title and how about, another separator and let's also go with um, if this is a blog I'd use primary category but I'm actually going to put in here something to the extent of another geographic identifier Las Vegas Nevada because I really want to find local clients and that's the thing too guys I mean, if you have a company that's e-commerce and you want to break into a national market geographic identifiers like this that are specific for regions are probably not what you want to go for you probably want to keep it really broad so in this case I just put something like um, you know United States if you really want to geographic identify them there in your national market just keep it to United States um, it is much more difficult to rank nationally in, in national markets than it is for local markets. Um, and, and honestly too, that's relating to, um, relating to the key phrase as far as that, that previous statement. Um, you want to try to keep your key phrases specific to start with. And as you start to rank, then make them more general. And an example of that would be something like, um, if you had a focus key phrase of website development appointment, Las Vegas, Nevada. And as you start to rank for that specific term, then maybe you drop Nevada. And then as you start to rank there, then you drop Las Vegas. And then as you start to rank there, you drop appointment. And then you start ranking for web development, which is a huge search term and so on and so forth. So you want to start specific and then work your way backwards from there. So um, I, I'm already eight minutes here, so I'm going to get, get through this as much as possible. So I'm going to update this and I'm going to, as soon as it feels like updating, holy moly for a local server, that's ridiculous. There we go. So we have a couple of things that we need to do here. Um, outbound links and internal links also too. I know, oh, it actually already says I have some internal links. So outbound links and internals, I'm going to talk about them both. Um, I'm using Elementor for a page builder here. You could do this in the regular WordPress editor. You could use any particular page builder. It does not matter. The point is, is that you just get outbounds and internal links in there. So what is an outbound link? What is an internal link? So an internal link or links routing to other pages or posts that are outside of your own site. This is important to kind of create an um, ease of use for the end user and also especially for the search engines to understand how your content is structured. Um, so those are internals. Externals are links that are routing outside the website. These work best, especially when you link to authoritative domains. So a really good example, guys, of an authoritative domain is like a website that's a university or a government article, something that has really high credibility. So um, that's super important too, especially if you're working on like medical websites or something like that, you know, link to universities, link to huge national posts, um, things with credibility. It's really super important. So <clears throat> anywho, so I've got some um, content in here a little bit, you know, some little stuff here, nothing too crazy. And uh, I know I have probably have some links in here. Instead of me looking around for them, let me just go ahead and demonstrate. Somewhere in this text editor, um, I'm going to put something like, if you 
would like to know more about our company here in geographic identifier. Do you see the repetition here? So pause. I want to talk about content real quick before I continue with link building. This is why content is still king in the SEO world, because as you're writing content, you want to add focus key phrase and distribute it evenly throughout the content. So you want it to appear a few times evenly throughout the content and also related key phrases and synonyms to the focus key phrase. That is so critically important. So um, in this case, I just kind of use this geographic identifier again because I am targeting this key phrase. So I kind of have put it in here. And if I was really focusing on this content, I would add in Las Vegas a few times in here. I would add in web development in here a few times. I see appointments already in here a couple times, et cetera, and so forth. And you want to keep them together uh, in the sense of the words collectively to keep the same string as your focus key phrase. So anyway, um, so what I want to do here is um, if you'd like to know more about the company, let's go to Las Vegas, click here. This is super generic, but this is just so you understand it. Click here, and then I'm going to link it to, and let's say this is what the actual URL would be for this particular um Actually, I don't even know if that link's right, but I would link it to a contact page. It's going to tell me that's a bad link, but it doesn't matter right now. So in reality, what this would look like is something like this. It would be like yourdomain.com forward slash contact or you know whatever the URL is for your contact page. So anyway, so that's an internal link. And you want to get you know one or two on your page. So I'd also come down here and I'd say um, something to the effect of... To view our portfolio, please visit this section of our website. Now, honestly, this is written very piss poorly. Um, you know, I again, content is really king. I would phrase this in a way that doesn't sound like to view this, click here, to view this, click here, to view this, click here. I mean, that's really stupid. So, uh, but this is just an example. So, um, again, your domain here. Um, dot com forward slash portfolio. It's just an example. Anywho, so now I got two internals um, and you do the same thing with external. So let's say that, the, you know, this particular piece of content in here was about link building. And I would say our friends at this blog.com have a fantastic article on link building you should check them out and then I'm going to select fantastic article because I guess that's what I want to link to um, um, sure that's a really long really long erroneous URL so anyway so that's an example of an outbound link and um, so you want to get a couple of those in there too. So go ahead and update, blah, blah, blah. And then let's go back to the dashboard. Oop. Let's make sure that actually gets updated. There we go. Now we go back to the dashboard. And Yoast is, um, you know, probably not going to like that too much. And actually, you know what? He, yeah, it, it took it outbound and internal. Okay. So this is why you can't trust Yoast, guys. You notice I put in some bull crap links in there that as far as the written content goes was not good, but yet Yoast still says it's good. In my eyes, it's really bad. This is why this is just a tool. So image alt tags are, um, if you go into your media library, and I'm just going to open this in a new tab so you can see here. Alt tags are important for crawlers to recognize too, also how images are related to the content that users are searching for. So this is request an appointment. I would imagine that this was probably on appointment page, um, but we want to add an alternate text that's going to be reflective of a key phrase that we're targeting for that page. So in this case, it was something to the effect of, um, whoop. You know, there we go. That's a focus key phrase that I want to target. And again, this is why key phrase planning is really important because you, you really want to take your time and plan all of these terms appropriately. But that's an alt tag. So, um, you know, you don't really have to add in caption and description. It's not going to affect your rankings. But for good measures, we'll say um, the epic book for a caption description. 
um, the captions when you hover over the mouse and then it shows you the descriptions. But this actual description is like the full thing. So um, the full 